Welcome to Winners, Wallets, and Worldviews, the only show that's going to teach you how to be somebody. Where in your life did you learn that you're not good at Take what you're most passionate about and what you're most fearful of. And what is the plan to overcome that fear? And what is the plan to enact that passion? About this the last couple of days, and it's just like when you kind of gave up on your childhood dream, or and how does that relate into the new year? And for some of you spiritual gurus, you know the solstice that's going on. There's a whole bunch of different things kind of spinning around, and I think that at least I feel like it's my body asking for a change, asking for something different. So we wanted to jump on today and just kind of talk about not what you want to accomplish in 2019, not what do you want to do in 2019, but more, who do you want to become in 2019? What do you want to learn in 2019 to become that person? Like what new knowledge do you need to acquire so you can step into those shoes? And knowledge is such a broad (laughs) thing, right? Because like creating actionable habits is a way of training your brain to learn something, learn a behavior, a consistent behavior, something like that. So that's what we wanted to talk about a little bit here today. We want to talk about the new year coming around, everybody asking for a change, and this is the time that we can start to change. So it's pretty exciting. We talk about 98 degrees and then that my new band name, 98 degrees Celsius, because it's two <laughs> so degrees away good. from a boiling point of water. But um, So who do you want to become in 2019? So what I started doing yesterday, because this is what I do for fun, is I start to actually plan out my goals. And I, I used to plan goals very differently. I put um, a list together. I'd have like business goals. I'd have career goals. I'd have financial goals, health goals, love goals. Um, that's kind of how I would I would lay it out. Well, this year I wanted to do something a little bit different because my big weakness has been um, consistency and follow through on some of these big goals. So what I wanted to do was create small goals, very very small goals, but create micro habits that I know would lead to a positive outcome. And instead, just kind of set the goal out as the vision, one goal. What is it that you're looking for? But then what are all the little micro disciplines and habits that you need to stay consistent with going forward into the future? So, for example, this thing right here, this green juice. Small, small little habit. How many of you guys like to go Thanksgiving, Christmas? All right, I'm going to eat whatever I want. I'm going to do whatever I want. And then we'll, we'll start over at the new year. And it's like, okay, that's a, I mean, that's the same people you probably get when – Okay, I'm starting with my personal trainer in two weeks, so. On January 2nd. So these <laughs> next two weeks, I can do whatever I want, I can eat whatever I want, and, and it'll be fine, right? You probably get that all the time. Oh well, yeah, it's a scarcity mindset. It's like, I can never do this again. Like, I'm not gonna, like, if I start this workout program, I'm gonna have less time, and if I start eating these healthy th- foods, I'll never have time to, like, treat myself or go out But you're already drink. lost at that point. Yeah. You've already lost. Absolutely. Because your, your reason why is not big enough. If your reason why is like, oh, I can't do this again, I can't do that again, so you don't even care. And you also don't have the knowledge knowing that you can do both. Like you think it's one or the other. So again, coming back to that piece or what do you need to learn in this new year? What are the what are those pieces of knowledge? <clears throat> excuse me, that is going to get you to a place to where you have the reasoning within yourself to be able to treat yourself every so often to like a yummy meal or I don't know, a drink at the bar with your friends, but then also be very disciplined. Yeah. Being very disciplined, you know, 90% of the time to reach and attain those goals as quick as possible. Yeah. So it comes down to a couple different things here with the new year coming around. It's like, you got to learn something about yourself. So for those of you who haven't done any internal reflection on your life, go do it because if you can learn something about yourself, you can learn what you need. My whole last year, I learned a lot about myself. Therefore, I learned what I need to change now in this next year. So that's what I mean, new year, new knowledge. What is it that you need to learn that you need to change about yourself? And then how do you create small micro goals that are actionable steps every single day. Like this is what I was saying before. This celery juice is just one goal. Every single day I want to have a celery juice. What do I need to do to have a celery juice? Okay, it means you gotta be you gotta be uh, organized. You gotta go to the store. You gotta have what you need there. And it just creates a whole level of small micro goals that gets you into a habit, a routine that's gonna have a positive outcome. 
what's the positive outcome that I'm looking for? Well, I'm looking to clean my liver. I'm looking to clean, um, to create a strong, robust digestive system, to lose fat, to lower my body fat percentage. All these different things are coming from one small micro habit. It's like I need to show up in the gym and do more cardio. I need to not skip like day. I need to, <laughs> I need to do um, my celery juice every Aww. single morning. I need to not cheat on my diet. All these different things are micro goals that just come from one thing. And I've read this in multiple books. I think Craig Groschel says floss, right? That's what he says, floss. I've heard um, you know Jordan Peterson says clean up your room. You hear Lewis House say make your bed. These are the micro goals that you need to start to come well, up with. Well, they start your day off on the right foot. Like if you woke up late, didn't floss, didn't make your bed, and those are the two things you aim to do in the morning. Now, what do you think the rest of the day is going to look like? Are you going to commit to you know having a better breakfast? Are you going to commit to going to the gym? Are you going to commit to doing some self reflection or meditation or reading? Probably not because you didn't commit to the two smallest things in the morning that you promised yourself you would commit to. So again, keeping those promises to yourself is so important. Don't let yourself down. You need to have utmost confidence in yourself that you will fulfill and show up for yourself. Um, you know what you make a promise to. So and kind it's of super important. And, and I, I had a football coach. Oh, well, we had a football coach in college. He's still there. His name's Jeff Munkin. Plays the head coach of Army. And Jeff Munkin is. One of the strictest college football coaches is a super disciplined, focused coach. And when we would do our sprints, he made sure every coach was watching the line to make sure every single person touched the line. Because if you didn't touch the line, you came back. What's, what's that mean? How many other things are you going to cheat on in your career? How many other things are you going to cheat on in your business? How many other things are you going to cheat on in the game, in the sport? Whatever it is that you're trying to focus on, if you're not willing to touch the line, you're not going to be able to fulfill all of the big commitments because you can't even stick with the commitments. Mm -hmm. So make your bed, drink the juice, floss your teeth, touch the line, all clean up your room. All these small disciplines build to a more consistent nature. And for you entrepreneurs out there, that is most of your downfall because I work with you guys and all of you guys have the same exact issue. It's you can't follow through to the end. You can't commit to the end. So where do you start? This new year, start with or one Or you stop thing. when it becomes uncomfortable. You stop when you have to look internally and look at yourself and go, holy smokes, what do I need to change about me? What is stopping me? What are my, some of my limiting beliefs? What are some things that I'm doing that's not getting me to this exactly. next level, to this next person, to this next version of myself that I want to become and I want to achieve? Like, what? I mean, look internally into yourself. You know, stop looking out to the outside world to blame people and to, um, exactly, just to blame people, really. Well, and who do you want to become? Yeah. Do you want to become someone consistent, disciplined, will follow through on my goal because I have a relentless pursuit of perfection in my life, or do you want to be someone that's like, no, nope, this came up, or the donut was there, or I just wanted to sleep in, or it's really hard to wake up in the morning. It's like, well, yeah, that's how everybody is. Do you want to be like everybody, be average, be boring, be nothing, or do you want to be somebody? And to be somebody, you got to start to look internally, what do I need to change in 2019? I want to make a million dollars. That's great. What do you need to do every freaking day to make a million dollars every day? How many phone calls do you need to get on the phone? How much money do you need to put away? How much money do you need to, to, you need to make? What do you need to do to be somebody that you want to become in this new year. Celery going to cool me off. Hot. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, too, and you know, if this is the year you want to achieve that goal that maybe you've had for 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, it doesn't even matter how old you are, what age you are, if you're 60, 70, 40, 20. Um, what is that goal you've had just burning in your soul for the longest time? Is this the year? Is 2019 the year you are going to go after that goal, whatever that may look like, whatever that may be? Do some like inner work. I mean, that's the term they use where you just kind of look internally. Like, what did 10 year old AJ want to do? I want to be a dinosaur. What did hunter. I I'm serious. <laughs> he did. His mom tells me that all the time. I wanted to be a but dinosaur. No, and then like 12 year old AJ, what did he want to do? And like 13 year old AJ, you were like going around making movies and writing be scripts. A dinosaur and a dinosaur hunter. No, no, but she's right. Like, so I was making, uh, I was making videos when I was a little kid. In fact, we had this awesome video. It was called The Dual Assassins, and we made that when I was about 13 years old. And like, who comes up with that when you're, I don't know, maybe I didn't. Like, when I was 13, I did not make movies or. 
think about dual. I didn't even know what assassin meant probably when I was 13. Oh, it was a legit movie. <laughs> Me and Pete, it was just great. <laughs> but the point is that like, um, I, when you're a kid, you have a lot more freedom. That's why kids have a lot of imagination is because as you achieve consciousness, you start to think with a lot more logic as you go through. And you had less years in the world for people to tell you no or how right. dumb your idea is. So the beliefs are basically, all these beliefs that are coming on can either empower you or they can put more handcuffs and more restrictions on your life. And this is what happens is you're going to be told, oh, you're living like right here. You're living in, in, in a dream. You're living in dreamland. You're in la-la land. You're in this. Grow up. You got to mature. You got to, you know, all these different things people throw at you throughout your life that say, yeah, you're right. Maybe I can't do this. Maybe I can't do that. Oh, you should get it. Get a haircut. Get a real job. That's one of my favorite songs <laughs> by George Thorogood because it's so true. It's just get a haircut. Get a real job. Go out and stop, you know. And it's like this is what the world throws at us, and this is what we take to heart. And then we say, this childhood dream, you're right, I was, I was just a kid, I was immature, I didn't understand. But you gotta understand, when you were a kid, you had none of this consciousness, you were flowing as freely as you could with the most imagination, and that was all there in you for a very good reason. Every thought that's come into your mind has come in there for a very good reason. And all those thoughts are there so you can take action on them in the real world and provide value in one way or another. That is my belief, you can freaking try to prove me wrong, I don't really give a flying shit, that is the fact. If you have a dream, you have a thought, and it's in there, it's supposed to come out in some way if it's coming from a higher place. And stop letting anybody else tell you differently. Stop wishing it was better. Stop wishing it was easier. Start thinking about how you can be better yourself so you can remove the noise, focus on the goal, and get enough discipline no matter how big or crazy that dream is that you can start acting every single day consistently with it. That is the game. That's the fun part. That's what you should be doing in this new year. Not thinking about how much weight can I lose, not thinking about all that bullshit. It's not thinking about how much weight can I lose. Instead, they're thinking about how many times do I need to go to the gym, for how many hours, and in the gym, how many minutes does my Again, heart rate need to be above a certain time? What is the knowledge I need to acquire? Yeah. What is the knowledge I need to acquire to achieve this goal? That is the first step. That is step number one. So that's what you need to be writing down. Oh, poor kitty. What is the knowledge I need to obtain? And, well, it's funny because Third, well, probably like 10 year old or nine year old Marissa, she wanted to become a hairdresser. Like I wanted to own my own salon. Like I remember walking into yeah. pink salons when I was younger. It's called the Beachcomber in Beachwood, <laughs> New Jersey. And it was pink as pink could get. I thought this was the coolest place to work. Oh my gosh, I'm gonna own my own salon one day and it's gonna be super pink. I'm gonna cut people's hair and style them. And my mom was probably the most supportive person. She told me she was going to be the secretary and she's gonna answer all my phone calls, book all my appointments. So I was like, this is great. I've got like, you know, the one person I just need approval from in my life saying, yeah, go do this. You got this and I'm gonna help you out. I mean, obviously down the road, my goals changed, but I always knew like I wanted to work for myself. I didn't want to just be a hairdresser. I wanted to own a salon. Like I didn't have a goal to be just a hairstylist. I wanted to own something and work for myself and be super creative around it. Then we bought a 1960s barbershop. And well, we yeah, then you like, <laughs> then obviously when you're younger, you don't think about the how. Like AJ is like, I'm gonna become a dinosaur hunter, but his 10 year old brain was like, how is that gonna happen? No, his 10 year old brain was not thinking, how is that gonna happen? And thank goodness, you know, even my 15 year old brain wasn't even thinking, how is that gonna happen when I wanted to become a, you know, I wanted to own my own personal training studio. Like at 15 and 16, I had this vision, but I had no idea how this was gonna happen. I obviously didn't even have, like, didn't even have a job at the time. I was working at Sears as a checkout girl in the women's section. Well, we get so caught up in the how. I mean, yeah. so many of us are analytical. We like to think about stuff. If someone told me at 15, how are you gonna have your own studio? I couldn't even give you, I couldn't even give but you. But how is it done, right? So it's like, that, how is this gonna happen? It's who do you need to become? Who do you need to talk to? What do you need to do? What now, kind of belief do you have, need to have in yourself yeah. to know this is going to happen? It's, 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 it's thinking about every single day, you need to change some characteristic of yourself to get what you want. If you want to be somebody that's making a ton of money, or you wanna be a, somebody that's an awesome spouse, or you wanna be someone that's extremely artistic, who do you need You're to become to do mother. that? You're just a great mother. What kids. inside of yourself do you need to change? Because there's, just, there's like little switches you can turn on and off, and you can sit there and be like, all right, if I want to be a super good investor, 
I need to be a very disciplined, intelligent investor. If I'm going to be intelligent, what do I need to learn? What new knowledge do I need to acquire? What am I missing? And then how do I get that into my brain? Little discipline so I can teach myself this. So there's a lot of things within you. You got to flip these switches on that you can change within yourself to become that. And I think that's what it's all about. We want like this easy answer. This like super easy thing. Like, or oh. just like a step-by-step -step kind of thing to your life and there is no step-by-step -step instructions in your life. You're never going to find it. Don't get so caught up on that how. Like if you have the passion and the drive to succeed this grand vision in your life, keep taking the next step. Who, like who would have thought me downloading a Tinder app in college was going to put me here today? Cats out of the bag. Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> that like nobody was gonna tell me that like what like who would have thought like okay you meeting AJ was gonna bring you to Oshkosh Wisconsin and from Oshkosh Wisconsin you're gonna drop the whole fitness thing start wholesaling in real estate find this great deal on a building then switch back to be like oh wait hold on now you can open up your studio because you have a great deal on the building like that's right nobody who's gonna tell me that I would have told you nobody that. knows the how <laughs> So I'm don't get so caught up yeah. on the how. Keep taking that next step forward. Well, it's okay, One step right? at a time. Tinder app for other guys that don't know. I don't get paid. I just for think this, it's so hilarious. There, there yeah, can be not true an love ad. <laughs> there, there can be true love found on Tinder. <laughs> That's just you know, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not paid by Tinder, but I, I should be <laughs> being such an advocate. And now that I'm an influencer, <laughs> just but, our own commercial on TV. <laughs> it's just, Tinder success stories. Just. But the thing is, guys, and it, it's <laughs> it's so true though. It's just. You don't know where it's all going to take you. You don't know where it's all going to go. And I think that it's it's okay to be okay seeing where the wind blows. Like being it's, okay it's, to just kind of one of the books I've been blow, gifting to some action. of my clients and some of my friends is it's called the Surrender Experiment, and it's mm -hmm. by Michael Singer. And it's a it's an odd spiritual book, and that's why I started gifting it because I like things that just rattle the house, shake the perspective. Everybody gets the money, the real estate, the the tactical, positive thinking, all this stuff. Books. But what the surrender experiment talks about, and especially, it, I think this works if you're kind of a spiritual person, if you're a Christian person. I think it's all the same message, and it's like learning how to surrender into the experience. So here's what we talk about, right? Who so, agrees? Put some hearts on Instagram. Yeah, give me a like or a, a just surrendering are, to the experience. Just surrendering to the experience. Let me explain what that means. It's like so. Jim Rohn talks about the set of the sail. You're not going to change the wind, but you can change the set of the sail. How you want to catch the wind and how the direction you want to go. Jim Rohn talks about the seasons. So we know that we are going to have winter. We know we're going to have spring. We know we're going to have summer and fall. And when I was in the military, people said, You're n there's no such thing as bad weather. There's only bad gear. And that makes so much sense, right? So I it doesn't matter. I could get snow. I could get rain. I could get sunshine. I could get a beautiful day. I could get a ton of wind. But I need to change myself so I can face those elements because the seasons are inevitable. What you get is going to be inevitable. And surrender into that understanding, right? And that's what surrender means. The wind will not change. Let's surrender. Let's blow with the wind, but let's adapt to it. Let's set the sail differently. Let's change our, ourselves so we can face the environment that we go into. That's surrender. That's understanding that and stop fighting the wind. It's the wind won't change. So so stop complaining. Oh, the wind's only blowing south, and we gotta go north. <laughs> no, there's different ways to sail into the wind. Yes. These these are strategies that have been around for centuries, right? And everybody needs to understand that you're given about the same amount of stuff. Now I understand people are born with totally different resources. People are born in totally different socioeconomic backgrounds. They're born with certain types of health. They're born with different types of intelligence levels. But These you're also things. born with different dreams too. You're born with different thoughts. You're born, and you're with, born different with different ideas. gifts. You're born yeah. with very different gifts. Everyone is gifted. Like who says you're gifted and you're not gifted? Everybody is gifted in something. So that drives me nuts, that phrase. But right. anyway. So surrender, the surrender experiment. It's a book I've been recommending lately, and it's because, and it's about this man that he goes through his entire life, and he vows to himself in his early twenties that he is going to surrender to the experience of life and observe it for what it is, internally recognizing the feelings and thoughts that trigger us, and then just going with it, but adapting to it as if it's given to you. And mm -hmm. if you guys want the details behind that, I encourage you to check out the book. It's by Michael Singer. He goes by Mickey with all of his friends. I think one of my favorite parts in that book is that knowing that 
what is so if you're looking to achieve this new year goal you're looking to move that step forward and something is triggering you and blocking you from doing that look at that as a life lesson if that person is in your way triggering you about something like when people used to say um, you know oh mercy your prices there's two they're like way you know they're not in the range of Oshkosh like that's pretty ridiculous blah 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 which they're not they're very <laughs> comparable to other personal training studios in Oshkosh very comparable like that triggered me it was like what the heck like maybe I need to discount my stuff a little bit more but no look at that as a learning experience look at that you're yeah. going through that for a reason so that's what the whole book is about like you're going through these experiences and these triggers for a reason in life to teach you something to make you stronger to make you stand in your power a little bit more so yeah well, God's not beautiful. gonna God doesn't he's not gonna give you anything unless you're serious about it so he's not gonna give you a challenge if you don't think you're gonna take it so if you if you can take the challenge, you got to go through a couple of different trials and errors of events in your life to show that you've acquired the skills, knowledge, and attributes to go on and live in this experience that you're ready to go to. So you go through a lot of these different things. You know, everything happens for a reason. And I do believe in regrets and I do believe in repentance, but there are things in life that you go through for very specific reasons so that you can become a better version of yourself. You can yeah. metamorphosize yourself out of some type of existing shell right? There's things you go through so you can grow. And I think when people stop, they think they're done growing when they graduate high school or they graduate college and you're not. You Such grow, a good point. You challenge yourself ah. every day. You should be going through another experience. You should be shedding a new mold. You should be becoming a different kind of butterfly. It's a totally different thing. Reading a new book, listening to a new podcast, not being the know-it-all. Like in this new year, you don't know it all. You don't. Like you, everyone knows that person who's got an answer for everything, right? They just come off as a huge know-it-all. Everybody yeah. else is an idiot. Everybody else doesn't know what they're That's talking me. about. <laughs> <laughs> just. No, but you're not. You're so open to new ideas, better ideas, um, more knowledge, just opening up your mind a little bit more into 2019 so, you, again, you can acquire that knowledge, become the next best version of yourself. Well, I encourage you guys to just look at people that – you want to be like in some way, if that's a relationship, if that's your finances, after your business, if that's with your health and body, um, look at all those different people and just try to draw parallels to what they're talking about with what other people are talking about. If you guys had a serious illness and you go to a physician and they give you some type of opinion and you think that sounds odd, what are you going to do? You're going to go get a second opinion. You're going to go see, does, let's, what's in the common ground here so I can start making sense out of this ambiguous reality. And it's like, that's what you guys should do with a lot of this stuff. If you want to have a good relationship, ask five to 10 people who've been in a relationship for 35 years what their secrets of success were. They'll probably tell you that there was a lot of give and take. There was a lot of compromises. There was a lot of reciprocal feelings given back to each a other. A lot of forgiveness. There's a lot of forgiveness. And I can tell you that in two years. <laughs> right. And it's just like, that is the, the whole game. And you got to start asking those questions. If you ask someone, uh, how do you make a lot of money? Ask wealthy people what they do. They'll tell you the same types of things. They'll say, listen to your heart. Follow your dreams, have a ton of follow through and grit, and don't give a crap what anybody says. That's what they tell you. Okay, I've heard this from now hundreds of people that have way more money than me. And it's like, we're way more successful. And then everybody that has less money than me tells me things like, oh, you should really settle down. Like, you're really busy. You're doing a lot of stuff. You should take care of yourself and your cat. Like, just focus on your cat. And I'm like, Lola's doing great. What do I know? But like, people just, they, they try to calm me down, but those people have less money than me. So it's just like, you want to start thinking about all of these different things in the grand scheme of things and figure out which ones do you want to be like? What matters to you? People that have great families, ask them what they do. They'll probably tell you that there's a lot of faith-driven um, objectives in their family. They'll tell you that, look, we focus on family values. We teach our kids to be strong, to be faithful, to, to love one another, to love your neighbor, all those types of things. That's why they have great families. So it's just you got to start thinking about what are all of these people saying and why are they saying it? And don't just take my advice. Take a hundred other people, other people's advice. Go follow people like this on your social media, so you're not just getting bombarded with yes. you know entertainment tonight and all these freaking celebrity breakups. Instead, you're looking at people with inspirational quotes or people on how to make money, how to get rich. It's all free. It's all out there. It's everywhere for you. Go out there and get it. You know, it's just get out there and learn something new in this new year. And then figure out what are the disciplines I need to stick with every single day so I can become the version of me that I want to become and attract the result. You don't get the result. You don't chase the result. You attract it. It comes to you when you're freaking ready, when you changed your life in a way that makes you ready. That's why Tinder works. <laughs> yep. <laughs>
For those of you guys you attract those people into your life who you match with and who you message. I should get paid for Tinder. <laughs> You've been plugging no, just, Tinder. I know. I don't know why. <laughs> But I just think it's just hilarious. And like, what's the odds of that? Anyway, but yeah, so that is what we are talking about today. I blame the celery juice this morning for uh, yeah, so for hyping you, us up. You guys knew topic. I was affiliated with a couple different coffee companies like, I don't know, a couple months ago. And I used to do a coffee buffet every morning. And mm, I kicked the coffee true. two weeks ago now. Oh, it's remember. been longer. Oh, well, oh, it's two months. Two months. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah, been months a ago. lot longer. I kicked the coffee two months ago, and um, I was re replacing it with celery. <laughs> because that was a good idea when I first heard it. <laughs> that makes Marissa. a lot of sense. Yeah, well, yeah, I'll just replace <laughs> coffee with celery. We'll see how it goes. Um, I don't know. I went through, like, a couple headaches, I think, the first two days. And then I've been feeling, like, no different. It feels great. I, you know, I get a ton of energy in the morning. That's what I have my most energy. So that's when I work out. I do all this fun stuff, and uh, it really feels. Well, you good. think in life you rely on a lot more things than you really need. Like yeah. you, you relied on coffee for all this energy and all this wisdom and all this knowledge it was going to bring you. My you were like so hyped like, up, <laughs> like, but yeah. you didn't need it. You thought you did, but you didn't need it. So again, look at that yeah. up to 2019 too. What are some things you think you are relying on? That or you don't you, you don't need to rely on whatsoever. It's just a habit at this point that may not be serving you. You just need what you got, and um, you know take take whatever you, you want from that. But the reason I explain that is just because you, I, I had all these crutches. Like it's like oh I didn't have right. my, I didn't right. have my coffee today, so therefore mm. I can't. I'm be not going to be intense and excited as I normally am. And it's like in reality, more productive. You thought right, I, like, my, my workout's going to suck now. I would start getting tired in the afternoon, and then I found out that was really easy to solve. I'll just move lunch up an hour until eleven, <laughs> and then I don't have to be as tired at one. Like I don't know, it was like little stupid stuff, and it's just start thinking about you can kick some of these bad habits for some of you guys that might be. Um, drinking. It might be something like a drug or smoking cigarettes or something even different. Or it might just be something easy like how do I go on a date with my wife every week? You know, and it's like you can start to in integrate some of these habits and remove some of the bad ones in 2019 and come up with something that you think is going to build up to a bit better version of yourself, whatever that is. If that's going to be you being a great husband or a great wife or a great mother or a great father, whatever that is, you can start to change one little thing and just stick with that. That will just like send monumental differences in in land navigation in the military. You you call it your azimuth check. So when you were you shoot your compass at a certain destination and you would try to stay on that degree pattern for a long time. And if you got just a couple degrees off, at the very end you'd end up wildly different places than where you were trying to go. I think if you can bring that all the way back down to say, I want to stay as close to my azimuth as possible. I don't want to move one degree or two degrees off because at the end, it's going to show drastically different places you're going to go. And I believe that same way with your life. I believe the same way with your business. I believe the same way with all of your habits. So start coming back to earth and start thinking about what do I need to do every single day? Floss your teeth, make your bed. <laughs> <laughs> make your bed, floss your teeth, clean up your room, and touch the line in your sprints. Show up. Be present wherever you're at. You're in the moment. I'm here with you. When I leave, I'm going to go to the gym. I'm going to work out with intensity. I'm going to touch the line. I'm going to get the reps that I write down for myself. All those types of things every day. Follow through. Follow through. And it's going to show monumental differences in your success at the end of the year. I promise you, if not, you can come back on here in one year and say, hey, this stuff didn't work. And we'll say, okay, you're blaming the environment now. You're not blaming yourself. Bad, Ooh, bad weather, yourself. not the bad gear. You're blaming yourself. Stop blaming other things and start looking internally because the weather won't be any different. The seasons won't be any different. Just what you're wearing out in the weather and just what how you set the sail is going to be different. So think about that, guys. This is so, a big year. New year, new knowledge. What do you need to learn this year? That is your goal. What are some things you want to learn? So I think we can wrap it up right there. Yeah. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to jump out at us quick before we head out. Um, next time we talk to you guys, no, we'll be back here. Yeah. We're going to Florida next week. Tomorrow. We're going tomorrow, to Florida we're going, tomorrow. That's, that's tomorrow now. <laughs> so we're going to Florida tomorrow, and then we're going to be um, having a good time at Disney again because we're a weird couple that likes Disney. <laughs> <laughs> My sister's there, and she gets free tickets. She's in We'll make up whatever excuse wonderful. we want, but we're that weird couple that likes Disney a lot. <laughs> we're a couple on Tinder, the weird couple that likes Disney. <laughs> <laughs> we got married at Disney. Maybe we got married at Disney. Well, we got married near Disney. Anyway, 
All right, guys. I hope you People guys all have time. a great Merry Christmas, and we will be back next Saturday. All right, guys. Take it easy. We'll see you. Hasta luego.